What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls Post Game. Coming to you live from our studios here in the West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. My guy, Big Dave. Bow. Bow. BAWL Sports. Bow. Our pal producer, Bow. Joey Spathis. We will hear from our guy, Will to Go Gottlieb, from the United Center later on tonight's post game show. Happy to have you all with us. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that like button if you're watching along on YouTube. Uh, Bulls fall to the Miami Heat in the second. Uh, game of this little mini series. 118 100 is the final. Yeah. Uh, drink up if you got them. Shout out, Goose. Uh, yeah, let me crack it. Uh, uh, With that loss tonight, uh, there you go. Bulls went three and five in a stretch of games where it was seven home games and one quick bus ride up to Milwaukee. Yeah. Three and five. Yeah. In basically seven and a half home games. Mm -hmm. And you're five and ten now. Yeah. And now you got to hit the road for a four-game road trip. Awesome. Starting with the Thunder team that already whooped y'all. Yeah. Everything's fine. Things are great. Yay being a Bulls fan. I don't hate my life at all. Oh, wait. I totally do. (laughs) How are y'all hanging in there? How you doing, Dave? I'm wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a Bulls fan. I'm not ashamed to admit this. It's okay. Um, but yeah, everybody was in double figures. The starting five was in double figures tonight, but they also were all minuses in <laughs> the plus minus column. Minus 15, minus 21, minus 22, minus 24, minus 16. Remember how we were talking in the uh, in pregame about the first quarters? The first quarter problem? Yeah. Remember I that remember conversation? That. I remember this convo. So you, we fixed it then, right? It was well, no problem. Kind of. Uh huh. Kind of. Uh huh. The Bulls did score twenty-seven points in the first quarter tonight. Oh, which was the most they've scored in the first quarter since all the way back on November eighth, mm, when they scored a minute ago twenty-eight against Phoenix. It's a minute ago. You still started twelve-two. Yes. It's not twenty-two to one. Right. So maybe you got to give the Bulls some credit for making some progress there. You didn't start the game down 21. You only started down 10. That's fair. But it, what the hell? What the hell is correct? <laughs> I mean, I think that's what it was. Look, first of all, credit to the Heat. They came out on fire from the three-point line. Got the lights man. out, man. They and then continued to. Yeah, 50% from the field. 49% from three. I think that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good, all right? Maybe don't leave Duncan Robinson open. You ever uh, think about that? Oh, you mean the guy who went seven? Who, what, what, no, I'm sorry. Six of nine for the three-point line? That's the dude you don't want to leave open? We already right. had to watch Grayson do that to us this season. Yeah, we did. Tonight we had to watch Duncan Robinson do it to us. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah. Again, the Bulls rebounded from a not-quite-as-awful start, that 12-2 hole, and the Bulls themselves were shooting well. Once they got out of that... Two point disaster start, which mm-hmm. you just you have to. Mm-hmm. If you're the Bulls, you just have to start that poorly. It's in yeah. the bylaws, I guess. Yeah. But Bulls shot well to rebound and put up fifty plus points in the first half. Okay. Yeah. You gave up sixty five. You played no defense pretty much all night. The defense, man. And then you went cold. And who's surprised? The Bulls end up shooting under thirty percent from three. Bro, the defense was just absolutely putrid tonight. Duty? It was poopy, <laughs> as you like to say. Poopy. Miami had seven steals to the Bulls, too, which is wild. Um, our defensive rebounds, they, they got our rebound on that. And it's funny because you look at points off turnovers, you look at uh, blocks, because the Bulls had more blocks because Patrick Williams had quite a few. Uh, and we'll get into Patrick Williams in a little bit. <laughs> but the assist, because Miami was so, shooting so high, 31-21 was the assist. 
the three point percentage. Oh God! Like I told you, <laughs> forty nine to twenty nine. Or if you want to say thirty, you want to round up, say thirty because it was twenty nine point seven. Sure, go ahead and do that. But they also shot forty six percent from the field as well. So you had a team that basically shot fifty fifty from the from the field and from the three point line, and they were unselfish in moving the basketball. And you played horrible defense against them as well because a lot of those shots we saw were wide-open shots. Mm -hmm. Honestly, those Mm -hmm. were easy shots that they were taking. And so by the time they took the difficult ones, they were already kind of in rhythm. Yeah. You know, they were already kind of just, oh, yeah, this is what we're going to do tonight to these guys. We expected the Heat to come out like this, right? After this loss that they had, we thought that they would, if they got – a lead, they were not going to take their foot off the gas pedal like yeah. they did last game. Yeah. They were going to keep their foot on the necks. So it was up to the Bulls to fight. It was up to the Bulls to say, hey, we're not going to go out this way. They went out that way. <laughs> they really did. I mentioned that there was – I mentioned that um, uh, everybody in the Bulls starting – Lineup was in negative on the plus minus. Mm-hmm. Everyone on the Heat starting lineup in the positive. Yeah, they, they had two people in the negative, and you know who they were? The guys who came in at the end and played two minutes apiece. Those were the only people on their team that were in the negative on the plus minus. That's it. That's bad. That's a bad. That's an ass whooping. Yeah. Shout out to the Heat for the ass I mean, whooping, but the Bulls could have played better. An easy way to tell that uh, you watch your team play just absolute trash defensively Mm -hmm. is when you see your opponents, three of their starting five all have six assists. That is effortless ball movement and people hitting open shots is what that is. Jimmy, Bam, and Lowry all had six times tonight. Duncan Robinson and Highsmith combined for five more. The Heat as an offensive team, 31 assists for the team on 42 made baskets. Now keep in mind what you just said with Duncan Robinson having five assists, also having six threes. Was, no, Duncan and Highsmith combined for five assists. Oh, combined. He had I was about two, to say. Highsmith had three. Ooh, I was about to get in on you yeah, real quick. No. I was about to get in but on you. Still six and a half for the three. 31 assists on 42 made baskets. That is too easy. Way too easy and way too simple. We saw so many simple plays being run, you know? Vooch, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my Yo, you know what? God. Yes. Let's, let's get that started off. Get that started off. Vooch. Oh, my Lord, dog. Bud. What in the hell, bro? What Buddy. is going on? Buddy. Seriously, man. <laughs> and he's funny because, again, if you just look at the raw numbers, 18 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists in 31 minutes. But if you look at the 7 of 16 shooting, if you look at the 0 of 4 from the three-point line that he had, oh, my God. Like, the two turnovers, of course, but the four personal fouls and the minus 22. You didn't play well. You simply did not play well tonight against this team, Mm -hmm. and we've seen you not play well a lot this Mm -hmm. season, honestly, if we're being real about this. He has not played well. We knew it. I think we expected a decline to come when when they signed this contract because I think all of us were kind of in lockstep with, with this contract when they signed him. No, we don't really want them to sign this contract, but you don't have a choice. You kind of put yourself in a corner. You kind of have to pay him to bring him back because he's still a valuable basketball player. Mm -hmm. But we knew a decline was on the way. It feels like it's here early. It it feels like it's very early and the decline is here for Nikola Vucevic. It's been been alarming how on display he's been as bad at defense Mm -hmm. because we never thought he was a great defender. But even last year – a lot of that was masked because of scheme, because of Billy Donovan's scheme that he was running. Because, of course, Alice Caruso as well, give him credit. But also, he never, Vuce never really put himself in that kind of position to where he was just like, I don't know what I'm doing out here on the floor. This year, they're exposing him. They are challenging him, and they're coming right at his ass. So when he plays these real centers, when he plays against a Bam, and he plays against a Joker, and those kind of guys... He looks lost, man, out there on the floor. I mean, Bam, what did Bam finish? Because Bam was getting his ass. I remember that last game. Again, Mm -hmm. 23, 11, and 6. That's basically the same numbers he had last game, honestly. 
That's basically what he put up. So he continues to to show that this dude is not anywhere near my level right here. And the fact that he can't hit threes really just puts it more on display of God damn, this is bad. Uh, yeah, people in the comments, not not happy with Vooch these days. Um, sports Chicago style, old man river come for Vooch. Old Golden Force, ooh, giving Vooch the Carlos Boozer comp on the defensive end. Ooh. I, I mean, that's disrespectful no matter who you are. Yes, it is. Shout out Booze. Um, <laughs> boxing Vooch uh, is the root of all of our defensive issues. Mm. Um, okay, a little bit of a disagreement there. Yeah, I agree. I, Vooch has been trash on defense the last handful of games. No lie. Um, it's worth talking about. Communication by everyone on the defensive end tonight was bad. Transition, bad. Switches, yeah. bad. Yeah. Closeouts, bad. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Not all on Vooch. Bad, bad, bad. But yeah, Vooch. Also bad. Uh, Hedjo in the comments said, I'm a Vooch supporter, and this is getting ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, our, our pal, uh, shout out to uh, Casey McNeil, uh, you know, creator of the greatest um, fake movie trailer of all time, who was here in studio with us a week ago. <laughs> in a world. I saw, and, like, he was talking to us about, he's been, a, like, a Vooch supporter and believer yeah, for I a remember. long time. I saw a tweet from Casey tonight that was like, yo, these last few games have completely changed my perspective on Vooch. Mm -hmm. mm. Even the Vooch supporters are... Having a yeah. tough time defending whatever the heck this has been. Like, he just looks lost out there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't know where to be mm. or he doesn't want to be there. You know, like, I haven't figured that part out yet. Like, is it because he doesn't know what's going on? And it's hard for me to say you don't know what's going on because you were here last year. This is, it's not a new scheme. It's the same thing. So, it just makes me think there's a real decline or a real I don't give a damn or I don't care. That's what it kind of feels like, man, when y'all sit here mm. and watch this. And... You know, when you pull your own self out of a game. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you're like, I, ain't need, I don't need to be in here. When I'm sitting here like, where's Andre Drummond? That's a problem. Because y'all know how I feel about and, Andre Drummond. And, and that, I think, is the thing. Like, the, the problems always multiply and amplify. Because, you know, Drummond had an off night tonight. Yeah. So did Javon Carter. So did Tory Craig. Yeah. Javon and Tori combined to go 0 of 7 from downtown tonight. Yeah. At least they got the shots up. They went 0 of 7. The Bulls bench got outscored by Miami's bench tonight 40 to 21. Actually, 40 to 19 if you don't count Phillips' bucket and garbage time. Wow. Your bench got doubled up, and your bench has been what has been saving you more nights than not when you are managing to stay competitively in a game. Yeah. You cannot count on your bench to do that every night. We're talking about Vooch playing like ass. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, whether or not Zach and DeMar are engaged. Like, I'm sorry. You can't, you cannot count on your bench. And I saw somebody, I think it was maybe Jamoy in the comments earlier saying, can we talk about, you know, the lack of field goal attempts for Zach in the first half again? Mm. We talked about it in pregame. Why is Zach not taking shots in the first half of these last handful of games again tonight? And look, he and DeMar both seem to be trying to get their teammates involved and distributing because I think Zach and DeMar combined for like eight first half assists. You're like, mm -hmm. okay. They also combined to take seven shots. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, well, is it because they're disengaged? Checked out is the phrase that, you know, Billy was asked about when it comes to Zach Levine because of all the drama going on. And I don't necessarily think it's about that, but when it's Zach and Demar, Zach and Demar, ISO, ISO, your turn, my turn. Yeah, we see the results of that product. Yeah, and it rarely works out well. And now it's like when they're trying to have a more you know equal opportunity offense, and they don't necessarily trust it. And you're saying to yourself, "Well, Zach and Demar combined for seven shots and a half. Something's How wrong. can that be? Something's wrong. Because you, you keep trying." different things with the same pieces oh. and it's all broken no matter what you try which again parentheses to saying all billy's fault it's not all billy's fault guys just a part of it yeah some but of it, some hold of it on definitely Joe. Is. Let, me, let me say this zach because we talked about this in pregame because i was like i don't know what's going on see if he's getting people involved or is he just not caring in the first half so i'm watching him in the first half and everything you just talked about is correct they come out in the second half, in the third quarter. What's the first thing you see? Zach Levine, step back three-pointer. Cash. 
when they get to that next shot, which is about to, at the 10.52 mark, Zach Levine, step back three-pointer, cash. Three-point lead at that point in time for Miami. Cuts the lead to three. Zach Levine ended up with nine shots. <laughs> like, bro, five or nine. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm confused. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really confused. Am I reading this right? 13 you points? Are, you are. 13 points. 13 points. Three rebounds. Five, five of assists, nine. Five of nine. Five of nine. Six of them were threes. Six. Six of them shots were threes. I don't mind that from certain players like Javon Carter. That's fine. Zach Levine played 34 minutes. Javon Carter played 14. He didn't score. He was 0 5. So you were four shots away from Zach in half the minutes. So problem, dog. And, and I look at DeMar, and it's hard for me to come in. And, again, it's always hard for me to come at DeMar because I know he's out there playing. I know he's out there trying. He got 10 shots, and he hit his first four. He was four for four. Like, he was cooking for a minute. So the other shots, you're like, okay, kind of where do they go? Who's taking them? You know, who's getting these shots off? And you're looking at, Matt, you're looking at these percentages of the of the starting lineup I'm just talking about. Mm -hmm. Kobe White was cooking because mm -hmm. he was. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get into that. Yeah, I was going to say, we can talk about Kobe. For sure, because we got to talk about something nice. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we got to talk about something nice in a minute. We'll get into him. But you should never, ever, ever be outshot by Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso should not have more shots in an NBA basketball game than Zach Levine. Ever. Ever. Devil's advocate moment. Please. Alex Caruso, as I mentioned to you while we were watching this game tonight, coming into tonight's game, sixth. Sixth in the entire NBA in true shooting percentage right now. Yep. He Yo, played. what? Matt, he played, what? Matt, he played 27 minutes. <laughs> he I played mean, 27 minutes. How does Zach Levine take nine shots? Like, Zach Levine played 35. And look, I again, is this a question of system and the Bulls trying, earnestly trying to change things up offensively as opposed to reverting back to their comfort zone, which is DeMar, yeah. ISO, right. Zach, ISO. Right. And that's why we have seen this decrease in usage of Zach Levine over these last handful of games. Or is it because Zach Levine is trying to pull some move of when I don't get out there, and get my shots up, look what happens. But the problem for Zach, if that is something that he's... And again, I, this is just pure speculation. I'm not reporting right, that that right. is what Zach's trying to do. Right. But as a Bulls fan, trying to figure out what's going on when your all-star has nine shots um, and, and looks completely disengaged for the first half of four straight games. Nine shots, bro. <laughs> I don't know if that's a tactic that would work because it's been a mixed bag of results. Yeah. Zach removes himself. Okay, well, it's not like Zach was cooking yeah. before all this trade talk started. Facts. He has gotten off to a horrible start to the season shooting. Yeah. yeah. Also, really weird. Really weird to see him that removed from the offense. Just very, very weird, Matt. It's just a weird thing that we're looking at and watching him. Because, again, like I, when I went on my Zach rant, like I said, I can't put it on injuries. You know what I mean? I can't say he wasn't ready. I can't say any of those things because you were. All those things I was excited about, man. All NBA is all I was looking at. But the attackery is wackery. Mm. And it's hurting my feelings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To sit there and watch this, knowing how good of a basketball player that you are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Knowing who you are. The type of player you are. Like, you aren't in trade talks because you're trash. You know what I'm saying? You're in trade talks because you're really good at basketball and people want you on their team. So when I sit there and I watch Alex Caruso have more shots than you, when I watch a guy like, you know what I mean, DeMar, who's chilling, have more shots than you, Kobe White, who was hot, but still have more shots than you, and then I'm looking at guys like Patrick Williams. Listen, Patrick Williams took seven shots. Seven. The dude who we sit there and be like, man, he needs to shoot more, do everything, was two shots away from you in 17 minutes? There's something wrong with that, dog. 
That's all I'm saying. It's something wrong with a guy who can score 51 points in an NBA game, come out and have nine shots. And you can't sit there and tell me it's because you weren't getting the opportunities. It's not like Billy was taking that shit away from you. Billy wants you to play. He wants you to get out there and, and score buckets. But for some reason, you don't want to take those shots. It's a continued pump fake going to the bucket. And now, before, Matt, we used to complain about how he would take certain shots last year, right? Man, dude, I hate this move that he do, like this right here. Man, that's a bad little you know step back, too, that he would take right there. But he would take 20 of them. Now it's like you won't take any of them. I wa- or you'll, I watch you go one on three against a team. How about you turn around and pass it to nobody? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing, dog? Like, what are we doing? Is it you not caring? Is it you off the same page with the coaching? You know, is it you not feeling? Co- I don't know what you want me to hang this on, but it's not a good look. When I got you got nine shots and your team loses by 18 points. And you got 13? Not a good look, Zachary. Not a good look. Uh, let's put a pin in that, take our first break, come back, continue breaking down tonight's loss to Miami, get more of y'all's thoughts. Hanging out with us in the comments. Appreciate y'all for being here. Hit that thumbs up. Throw some super chats if you feel so inclined. Um, I do want to touch a bit more on, on the game Kobe had tonight. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. On the other side of the yeah, break. Let's, we, let's touch on something positive. Um, Make sure, of course, you are also subscribed to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Tonight's CHGO Bulls postgame brought to you by Circa Sportsbook, offering tight money line splits and their low hold model. They always strive to have those minus 110 odds for over-unders, for games, uh, for game spreads, because that value deserves to go into the pocket of you the better, mm-hmm. not, the, not, not the sports book. A lot of times you'll also, you'll often see uh, over unders and game spreads at, mm-hmm. at minus fifteen, one fifteen, or minus one twenty. Why? 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 Not circa. They keep it at minus one ten. They also don't limit players based on their winnings, so every player has the same limit. Unlike other books who do limit their winning players. Yeah. Circa is so confident that you will find the best quality of odds um, of spreads on their app that they encourage you to download any other sports betting apps that you might want to try and compare. That's how confident they are that theirs is the best. Mm. Uh, They also have real people behind the Circa Sports brand who resolve any issues in a Mm. timely fashion, unlike those other books who use... Jerks. Jetbots. Jerks. Jetbots. Hate you. No. Why? I'm going to send Joey out after you. Let me talk to a human. Joey, get the chatbots. (laughs) <laughs> All aspects of the Circa app are being run by the same team that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. We can vouch for it. Woo! Download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circusports.com slash Illinois dash app to sign up today. Mm. Be on the lookout also for Circa's events in the Chicagoland area. Watch parties, tailgates, awesome stuff. We've attended some. Oh. They are fun. Oh. If you or someone you know may have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. Text GAMB to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Mm. You know what? I want to talk about something near and dear to my heart. Please do. Flooring. Oh, doggy. Oh, you want to make <laughs> sure it's right. All right. With the wood floors that you got, you want to make sure they're looking smooth and right. Like the ones we got right here at the studio. Mm-hmm. But you know it's only one team to call. And only one team only that you need to call to get your floors right. And that is Empire Today. Because with Empire Today, you get to shop at home convenience. The right product for your needs. Quick and professional installation. And with the most important thing, the low price guarantee. It is the only thing they do. Is the flooring, making sure you got it right. No, no, no. They ain't going to be over here doing all this extra stuff. Hey, you want to buy some of this right here? You get some of that right there? Get you on the side? No, no, no. This ain't a corner store. No. This is specialty. No, 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 no. (laughs) Shout out Sarah. This is specialty stuff we're doing right here. Empire Today Flooring. It is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they have copycats. Why wouldn't they? Because when you're the best, 
why wouldn't people want to find out want want to do something off of you? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they do all the time, right? Just, that's why a bunch of people are out there every day acting and behaving like Matt Peck. Oh, talk to him! <laughs> talk to him! <laughs> They're trying to do you, but you know what they can't. They can't do it. God, I hope not. No, they not. Mm-mm-mm. I know for a fact people trying to do me, mm-hmm. but they cannot. No, no, no. <laughs> you get only one of this. Like you get only one of Empire. Empire can't be beaten on quality, service, speed. So those competitors, guess what they'll do? They'll just advertise some low quality products and Empire simply will not carry because they are not out here to cheat you. No, no. They just want the best for you, all right? That sounds like a wonderful company to me. Does. I don't know about you. Sounds like wonderful me. They keep shopping for floors simple with curated product selection. And Empire only has a simple philosophy. It is to help. That is their philosophy, to help you find what is the best flooring for you. They want what's best. You find what you need and not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitute. Oh, this is acrylic. Oh, this is different. Oh, this is pine. Oh, this is... No, 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 no. What fits you and your floor first? How do you feel about it? What do you feel like you should get some money on right there? Because we got a low price guarantee that's going to hook you up. That's what Empire do. And they got the virtual floor design. It is a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. It's easy, y'all. Just snap a pic and instantly see how new floors will look in your room. That is so simple right there, ain't it? Shopping for floors at a big block store, that rhymed, can be frustrating. You might talk to someone who was working and don't know what the hell they talking about. They don't know nothing about nothing. They just there on a Saturday trying to pay some extra bills on a Black Friday. They don't know. They're just trying to keep people from stampeding and running around and stealing the TVs. You coming in asking them about floors, they like, I don't know. I don't even have a floor, all right? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't even have that. You are already doing better than me. Go to Empire. Allow the people who do nothing but floors to save you some money and do the right thing. Schedule a free home estimate when? Today! All listeners can receive what? $350 off. That's the discount, y'all. I'm going to say it again. $350 off when they use that promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See EmpireToday.com slash C-H-G-O for the details. 588 to 300 Empire Today. Ooh. Come on! Oh, roll reversal. Yes. I dig it. Keeps it spicy. Can you kick it, Joe? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Sweatpants again for Joe, by the way. Uh, Comfortable. How many? So this is my favorite pair. Favorite pair? Yeah. Shout out. Shout out to your favorite I like, pair. Like the, pants, like the two-tone Heather Gray. It's a good look. Yeah. Like the like anthracite or whatever type pattern. I also like have a kind of a two-tone Heather yeah. Gray going on up top. Oh, I like him. He does. Twinsies. He does. Twins. Uh, okay, real quick before we get to Kobe, because I do want to talk about Kobe. I saw okay. Terrence Seven, one of our regulars in the comments, saying, why is it that Zach and Damar took basically the same number of shots tonight, mm-hmm. and you guys are only grilling Zach about it? That was called first segment. <laughs> Listen, let me get on this right here, and, and just to answer your question. I'm not going to grill Damar on this. You know why? Because DeMar has shown you time and time again throughout the season and throughout many seasons that he will happily take over and be the man on this team. Did you not see him last game hit that game winner? What you see Zach do? Are we talking about a Zach game winner from last game? Or are we talking about what you're calling Joey Flight 8 gate? <laughs> what are we talking about? <clears throat> it's a different monster right here. We have watched DeMar build up the cachet possible mm-hmm. for him to have, you know what? You took that many shots. All right, bro. I get it. Zach ain't done that this season for a dude who just signed the contract and came in looking like I'm the best player on the team. We know DeMar is in decline. We know it. We see it. It's evident. And DeMar DeRozan is yes. fighting Father Time. <laughs> but he is still performing for the Chicago Bulls. Go check his three-point percentage. Ask me who's got a better one, him or Zach. 
<laughs> I like that shit. Who, who doesn't pass up good open looks at threes, but instead takes them in rhythm and confidently? That is DeMar DeRozan. Bingo. That is not what we need to hear. <laughs> Double bingo. We need to hear that to be about Zach. So, yeah, we're getting on his ass because he's not the dude playing like Zach Levine. DeMar's playing like DeMar. It's just a lesser DeMar because he's older. But it's still the same thing. This is brand new crap we're seeing from Zach Levine, dog. I ain't seen this before. Have you seen Zach play like this before? For this stretch of, stretch of period of time? I ain't. I've watched these games all the time, dog. He is aggressive. All he do is take shots. All he do is control the basketball. We've sat here and be like, man, we need to get him off the basketball a little bit more. He shouldn't do that no more. Man, he's taking too many shots out there. He needs some kind of help. He's out there doing this stuff himself. And oh, by the way, he's 29. He's still in his prime. And he looks like he's declining. And it's not even the decline. That's what makes it frustrating. It just looks like he ain't doing it. That's the what we're talking about right here. That's the difference of this between him and DeMar. I can sit there and point to things for DeMar. What can you point to for Zach? What can I point to? He healthy as hell. Healthy as a horse. He's happy as I don't know what. Mm. No, nah, man. It's different, bro. Uh, real quick to wrap up that little exchange. I, I, I'm pretty much exactly with you what you said there, Dave. Terrence Evans saying, but that's the issue. Zach's been here seven years before DeMar. Zach was the guy. Um, you know, and DeMar shows up and Zach's not the guy. But Zach then, was an all-star even when he got here. Nighthawk Dragon said Zach couldn't make the playoffs without DeMar. What do you mean? When, he, when uh, was he an all-star without DeMar? He, he wasn't. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> No, he was with with Boos that one year coming up off the bench. 2021, Mm -hmm. Zach was an all-star reserve Mm -hmm. before DeMar got here. Mm -hmm. But, again, an all-star on a losing team. mm -mm. See, I don't even consider that. When he was that dude and that guy, it was when DeMar was here. Yeah. When he had that season that we were like, he is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Had one of the best second half of the season we ever seen. That's when DeMar was here. Mm -hmm. So don't give me that shit, bro. Like, we've seen him be great when DeMar was here. We've seen it. I've seen him have his best times when DeMar is here. He's called him his best friend. He's like, this is my best teammate I've ever played with. Come on, man. No, bro. He ain't doing it, man. Nine shots. Nine. Nine. Nine times. Nine, Joey. Tell Lindy he took nine. (laughs) Took nine. Nine shots, dog. By the way, Esteban was at the game, and he said the loudest the crowd got was for... uh, Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. Of course. (laughs) Biggie Bagel. (laughs) I mean, I saw saw a lot of empty seats in the UC tonight. A lot. Oh, darn. What a shame. Um, As okay. when DeMar the, the, was Zach, the Zach nine shots thing, it would, it's literally like if you have Devin Esther and he's kneeling it for a touchback exactly. every time. Exactly. Like, what, are you, what are you bringing us if you're not going to shoot or, the ball? Or, or if he catches it and then he goes down immediately. Right. What I'm yeah. saying, if he's kneeling the ball or fair not, catching right. it, whatever it is. Like if, or if he, catches it, he makes a move and then goes down. Like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing, dog? Like, it's like bunting with if when the Cubs get Otani this, this winter. Oh, talk that joke. Uh and, and it, was, it wasn't time. just Zach only taking nine shots tonight. And again, it's not like we all know that DeMar is also limited on the defensive end. But we also see DeMar put in effort Ooh, many nights on defense. That part. Blocking shots, getting steals, drawing charges. That part. And to his credit, Zach played solid defense for eight or nine minutes of, la- uh, of Saturday night's comeback. Mm-hmm. Zach played on both ends. Tonight, we went back to seeing traffic cone. Zach. Not the traffic cone. On defense. Which leads me to our bright spot for the night. You know who did play defense tonight? Mm-hmm. Aside from Alex Caruso, who does always and forever mm-hmm. for the rest of time. Once long, the rest of us are long dead, Alex Caruso will still be on the hardware out there somewhere playing lockdown defense. The other person who played defense tonight was Kobe White. Yes, he did. And I, we got to give Kobe White some love, Dave. Yes, we do. I have no problem with that. Let's toss it to him because he started early. Kobe White was the reason they were in the game in that first quarter, and they didn't have one of those first quarters from hell like they've been having. That was all on Kobe White. The three-pointers were falling for Kobe White. He was doing his thing many a time. I've sat in this wonderful chair, and I've told y'all, Kobe White is a slow starter. He has always been a slow starter throughout his career here with the Chicago Bulls. It's just what it's been. 
So when we talked about him and Zach Levine getting off the slow starts, I continually said I'm not worried about Kobe's because this is what he does. I'm more worried about Zach's because I've never seen him do it. But Kobe's, I know what he does. He waits till he gets to late November, early December, and then he balls out. I said that a million times to you all, and now you're seeing it. This is kind of, and even if you look at his numbers in last game, shot really well in that game last game against the Heat. Kobe is finding his 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 legs. It's what it what he does, man. It just takes him a while to find that shot, and then when he does it, late November, early December, he gets off to a solid run. So hopefully, we we'll continue to see that, and combining that with the defense that he played as well. Like you said, Matt, he was aggressive defensively tonight. He didn't leave Caruso alone. He was bodying up on anybody. When he was in the post on Jimmy mm-hmm. Butler, he was still rolling with him. Mm-hmm. Jimmy was trying to draw those fouls, and he mm-hmm. couldn't against Kobe White. To his credit, mm-hmm. he couldn't do that because last game he did. Yeah, He got Kobe in serious right. foul trouble. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen this game. That's a great adjustment by Kobe White. He did an excellent job playing that defense and hitting those shots. You needed those buckets. Without those buckets, it wouldn't have even been close in that first quarter. It would have been the blowout from the beginning, all right, than it was later. It would have been worse in the beginning, man. So Kobe White kept them in that game for sure. Uh, it's it's encouraging to see. And look, as, as some of us who are maybe somewhere between realists and pessimists are already thinking about what happens next, Kobe White – I would like to see the Bulls hang on to Kobe White. Okay, tell me why. Because he has shown me some really solid things between his growth at the back end of last season, okay, coming into this season. Yes, is he still maybe a little bit out of his ideal position at being asked to be this team's starting point guard? Yeah. Again. Again. Yes. In spite of that, he still shows you more positives than negatives. On a damn near nightly basis. It's true. Streaky shooting? Sure. Occasional nights where the decision making? Ooh, ah, Kobe. Yeah. But you know who looks way more confident in their game than just about everybody else right now? Because it's Kobe White. On both ends of the floor. It's true. He does. He looks confident. He looks comfortable tonight. And he looks sure of himself when he was taking those shots. And those are important things, man. And he's honestly looked that way. The shots just weren't falling for him. He never looked discouraged, never looked sad about it. The move he made to the layup, I mean, his, even his layups, man, he was getting inside the paint and scoring were awesome. His and one when he got that layup was <coughs> awesome. It was like, yes, this is what we want. So you're getting guys who, who are doing their job to keep you in the game, which means your stars are supposed to carry you the rest of the way, mm-hmm. which is why I'm over here angry at five of nine. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because Kobe White did the job he's supposed to do and keep you in the game. Your star is supposed to carry you through. Because even starting that third quarter, Kobe White was a part of that as well. Kobe was a part of that as well. So when Zach started hitting those threes, oh, my God, you know why I look good? Because your star started doing stuff along with the role player. That's why I look good. And then, yeah, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> like, it was crazy, all right? So, yeah. Yeah, him sleepy down. Uh, Yeah, and, and like, Kobe, I, I noticed, single-handedly saved the Bulls when his four teammates out there were playing trash transition defense mm-hmm. like three times tonight. Three. Kobe made up for a lack of effort and execution from multiple mistakes from teammates tonight yeah. on the defensive end, and he knocked down four of eight threes. That, I mean, that's if, if we had it, you know, a king of the game or a, a, a goon, a, a, like Kobe's getting that love tonight. Mm. He deserves it. Um, meanwhile, I heard a jingle. So I think it's time to talk to a certain somebody. Is it? Joseph? Uh, yes, here. I thought we were going to go to an ad read. So let me pull up here the old... Uh, we'll just bring Will in now. The old hotline here. Delayed ad break. We'll delay the ad. Don't want to keep... Don't want to keep Will waiting. That's where he's the goat! The goat! He's the goat. Joining us on the Goat Talk hotline. Will the Goat Golly. Follow him. On Twitter, Will Ooh, underscore Gottlieb. Wolf. Good God. Oh, Quaff is looking good. That flannel <laughs> on the is looking good. Quaff to the left. Dude, oh, hanging off to the right. Serious. He ain't playing around. Time for, time for a haircut, boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, thank you for joining us, man. Uh, Bulls fall to the heat, splitting their miniseries with them, falling to 5-10 and 10 on the year. 
Uh, Dave and I made note of the fact that, you know, did not really take advantage of this long homestand, and now they got to hit the road for a four-game trip. Not ideal. Uh, I, I first want your thoughts on a very odd night from Zach Levine in all of this drama and turmoil. You know, we were talking in pregame about Billy's comments before tonight's game, putting that to bed, saying they addressed it, um, talking about Zach's explanation in the locker room last night. He takes three shots in the first half. He takes nine shots total tonight. What what did you make of what's going on with Zach? Yeah, I think part of it was the Heat's game plan. They were putting a lot of pressure on him, trying to take the ball out of his hands and to Mars. Um, they went to a zone uh, for a good part of the game, um, just trying to like junk it up a little bit and take away those driving lanes. And when teams do that, you have to get the ball to the middle, and that's where Vooch and Caruso at times were playing. So I think part of it was game plan, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. It did look like he was pretty passive from where I was sitting. Um, times where he'd like come on the court, have the ball, not look at the rim, get rid of it, come back to him, not look at the rim, get rid of it, enter the ball to Booch, just kind of stand there. I mean, it just didn't look like he was pedal to the metal. Um, he kind of said after the game that, you know, he was just trying to play the possession in front of him and trying to make the right reads. And Billy kind of said the same thing. He also said Zach has the ultimate green light. Like I think the quote was, um, there's never ever a bad shot when, when Zach takes it. Uh, and I think to a certain extent that's true, but you know, last game where I think Zach was really doing a great job of like playmaking and setting guys up, I didn't really feel that tonight. Um, but I think part of that was heat game plan though. I do think he was just not really as aggressive as he might typically be. Oh, well, one guy who we talked about early on, who also we thought was a little disappointing was Vooch. Is it something different that teams are doing with him this year uh because it feels like he's it feels feels like he's more out of position and doesn't know where to be a lot when we're sitting here watching these games and we know this isn't a new defensive scheme he he knows exactly where to be but are teams attacking him differently or is this just the beginning of a decline uh from Vooch because you know of the age are you talking defensively or offensively i'm talking defensively defensively um, you know, I think this was not a great defensive effort. Um, you know, I, I, part of it was that Duncan Robinson got off to a super hot start. And um, when they stretch you out like that, it's just a little difficult. Now you're a little bit more oriented towards the perimeter. There's a little bit more space in the lane. And I think that's where Mooch can struggle, where he, you know, he's got to keep up with guards, keep everybody in front of him. And that's a difficult task. Um, so I think that was a piece of it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's part of it too. It's like they were, you know, they were getting Kobe switched on to Jimmy pretty much every single time there. It would put him in the post and, uh, you know, Vooch would be on Bam and they would take Bam out of the paint. And I think that's a little bit more uncomfortable for him too. So, you know, Jimmy would get Kobe posted up. They would have to force a double. He'd kick it out, swing, swing. And like Vooch is now in rotation. I think that's just kind of a, a difficult place to live for him. Um, they really pride themselves on being a team that defends with five players and there's going to be nights where the matchup is difficult. You know, he's not just like going out there to play one-on-one -on -one against Embiid or Jokic every night. That's part of it. But he's also got to be help support. Um, he's got to rotate. He's got to get out to shooters. And when they're really stretching you out like that and they're doing those inverted post-ups with Jimmy trying to back down your point guard, it's just it's hard to keep up with the way that they're moving the ball. Will, we were talking in pregame about the bad starts in this last stretch of games, especially both against Orlando and Ma uh, Miami on Saturday. And, you know, hashtag 22 to 1, never forget. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't as bad tonight in, in that it was 12 to 2, not 22 to 1, but yet another atrocious start out of the gate. Billy forced to call, you know, a pretty fast timeout. Was that addressed again after tonight's game uh, by Billy? And, and, I mean, we know that, that he tried to give an answer when you and your fellow members of the beat asked him about that after the Miami game, and it seems like he basically didn't have an answer. We have another start where the Bulls dig themselves a hole that they have to try to come, climb back from. What did you make of that, and did Billy address it after the game? We keep asking, and they keep not having answers. Um, Zach was just like, you know, if we knew the answer to this, we would correct it. Um, Billy's talked about it every single availability that we've had. It's like, what, what do you do about this? How do you fix it? Well, we show him film. We go over the plays. 
Uh, we show them what it looks like when there is more sense of urgency in the third and fourth quarters and when guys are really moving. But we need to play with that kind of force, that kind of pace throughout the start of the game. Uh, and they're just not doing it. And I think part of it is just like you got to do it. And it's just not happening. So um, I don't think anybody really has the answers. Uh, I think part of it is just like this accumulation of getting beaten down. Um, you could really feel it in the locker room. And guys were frustrated and upset that they lost again, that they got beat by 18 points. Um, they understand that they're five and 10 as much as the fans do. And that, you know, they want to be better. They feel like they can be better. They feel like they're talented enough to start these games better and not have to dig themselves out of a hole. But it is every game. I mean, it happened in the Milwaukee game uh, last Monday. It happened Wednesday against the Magic. Uh, they did get off to a better start on Friday against Magic, but then their offense completely collapsed again. Uh, it happened on Saturday. They went down 9-1, to and then Billy took a timeout, and then they went up 22-1, to and Billy took another timeout. And then again today, 12-2. to um, it's, I think there's no good explanation because it's just such an insane thing that's, that keeps happening. Um, and yeah, I think part of it is mental. That's my assessment is like, I think they are just beating themselves to be honest with you. I, I don't, I think that this season, um, the, the pressure on what's at stake here in terms of keeping this team together, Vooch, Damar and Zach all said it. And then Zach came out with the soft trade request. Like there's a lot of pressure on this thing to go well. And I think that they have been a little bit defeated, quite honestly. Mm. Well, do you have an issue with DeMar DeRozan only taking 10 shots in this game? Because I ask this because he started off four for four and looked like, you know, he was kind of going a little bit, but he ended up only taking 10 shots. Now, personally, I didn't. And I, and I you know, accredited to DeMar DeRozan just, you know, having one of those games and he's built up enough cachet to where I'm not just as upset at him taking that amount of shots as I am when I see Zach do it. But I'm just curious as to your opinion on, on his game tonight. Yeah, I think honestly the, the answer is pretty similar to uh, what I said about Zach. I think a lot of it was game planning from the heat, uh, the way that they were basically cutting out gaps and preventing driving lanes Um some of the shots that he did take were threes and uh, one super long two with his toe on the line. Like they just really weren't able to get anything inside the paint. And I think they, they've really tried to rely on that because they feel like it's going to be a source of better, more sustainable offense. If they can get paint touches and get to the free throw line, Damar had one free throw attempt, Zach had one free throw attempt, and I believe it was a technical free throw. Um, driving lanes just weren't there with that zone that the Heat were running. And um, I mean, just, it was just a terrible offensive night. I think part of it was game plan. I think part of it, like I said, was the slow start. It just didn't really click at any point. Um, I don't really feel like they figured out how to attack the Heat at any point in that game. And um, I mean, they only scored 100 points. So that's, that's kind of what comes with the, the territory. Uh, well, we, uh, we went back and forth between saying, yes, Pat. Where's that been? And eye rolling. Oh, my God, Pat. Uh, you made note of it. I saw as well. I certainly observed it. And, and Dave was like, wait, for real? When I noticed that not only, you know, is Pat getting pushed further and further down that Billy Donovan rotation. I mean, he, he's basically getting two stretches tonight, uh, you know, in these last few games off the bench. Tenth man off the bench and doesn't come in until DeMar's already back on the floor mm -hmm. along with Drummond as they did tonight. Put the ball on the floor a couple of times and got to the rim with efficiency, especially that one take he had in the second quarter when this was still a game and not garbage time. And then, again, passing up an open look, putting the ball on the floor, turning the ball over. Um, mixed bag, more Pat as he, you know, shrinks into Billy's rotation. What did you make of his game tonight? Yeah, I thought he did a couple of good things. Um, for one, defensively, I thought he was pretty active, had a couple of block shots. Um, just like, you know, the way that he kind of helps off the ball uh, and protects the rim from the weak side, I think is always pretty effective. And then, you know, being the perimeter defender that he has kind of grown into, um, I did think he had some good moments there. A couple of decent drives. Uh, I think he had a three. Um, but, like, to me, what Pat is missing right now is, like, it's just touch. Um, I don't think of him as a player that doesn't have finesse in the sense that, like, He's not just a bulldozer, obviously, but 
there are times where he'll like get a rebound and then the ball just like slip out of his hands. There are times when he'll go up for a layup and he'll just completely lose the ball or when he'll dribble it off his foot. Um, I feel like his ball handling, his footwork, just his hands in general are kind of holding him back from being able to like put the ball in the rim sometimes or get a rebound sometimes. And um, yeah, I don't really know what the fix is for that other than like practice and, you know, ball handling work and getting more reps. But to me, like that was pretty like in the smaller role that we're seeing him in, he is getting more opportunities to have the ball in his hands. Right. Um, I think that's part of the reason why his role has been reduced is because they want to put the ball in his hands a little bit and see what that looks like. The problem is, you know, he, his, his shot is so slow. He, he can't get a shot up unless it's like a wide open catch and shoot. There was a play I tweeted out where he was running a pick and roll and the defender went way under and he had a wide open three and he just drove into the lane and he made a layup, which was great. He got all the way to the rim, but he's got to like make it easier on himself. And I think he can do that by speeding up his release, working on his handle um, and just, yeah, his footwork, his touch, his handle and his shooting release. It's just not good enough right now. I think that's really holding him back from being able to put plays together. We're like, yeah, sometimes he'll get a drive, he'll get downhill and make a layup. But once the team, once the other team takes that away, then there's not much more he can go to. Good, man. Thank you for joining us, Will. All y'all out there, Bulls Nation, make sure you are tuning into all of Will's coverage of our beloved Bulls. Will underscore Gottlieb is the Twitter handle. Make sure you're reading everything he writes for us, allchgo.com. That column he wrote after the win over Miami Saturday. Absolute banger. Do yourself a favor. Go read it. Will, we're so excited to see your beautiful, quaff shining face in studio when the Bulls hit the road. I know. We got a couple uh, couple of road games now. The Bulls are going to be out of town for, I think, about a week. So we're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> we're back. I miss your musk. Get back here. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Have a great night. Take care, Will to go, golly. That's who we use. Uh, all right, let's knock out a quick ad break. We'll come back. We'll do some super chats, yeah. and then we'll get on our merry way. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, tonight's CSGO Bulls brought to you by Ray Chevrolet. Ray! Radio Ray! Black Friday savings time is here at Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake. As one of the top-selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest Chevy inventories. And all month long, you can save big at Ray Chevy. During their Black Friday sales event where you can choose from over 100 Silverados mm. in stock, ready to go. The perfect tailgating vehicle for the remainder of our football season. Exactly. But that's not all. Get 0% financing, $0 down, and zero payments until 2024. Mm. Everybody looks for the word free while they're doing their holiday shopping. I do. Savings are great. Free, even greater. And that's what you'll get when you go to Ray Chevrolet for an Thanks, oil man. change. What's up? Free tastes ignore. better. Ignore. It does. Pay, don't pay attention. <laughs> it was a whisper. That's why I was curious. Oh, yeah. I understand. Because I, I, that's why I don't teach Joey things. Because <laughs> when I say things to him, he don't know how to act. <laughs> You'll get a free oil change at Ray Chevrolet. All you need to do is My mention God. that you were uh, hearing about Ray Chevrolet from your pals at CHGO Bulls when you go. And uh, make your appointment. It's a Black Friday offer you don't want to miss, but you have to schedule it by November 30th. You can also buy with confidence with that Ray Price promise. You know what it is. It's the promise that the price you see online, the price you pay when you go to the dealership and say, hi, I would like that car for that price. And instead of saying, just kidding, that price isn't the price. This is the price. They will say, yes, that is the price. Here you go. Enjoy your car. Thanks. Uh, visit Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com to get your Black Friday savings. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. Beer! Mm. It's a wonderful thing. You get in your car from Ray Chevy and drive yourself right to the store and say, mm, what do I need to pick up? Some of that goose island that you need to pick up because it'll mm -hmm. make your day better. <laughs> Honk, honk. One more time, Joey. You know, do one more for Linda. Oh, look who's out of bed coming in. You mean Lisa? I'm calling her Linda. <laughs> My apologies. I didn't know who Linda was. I was like, is there a Linda we don't know about? My apologies. Or did you mean Lisa? We rolled. She's Lisa. not watching tonight. It's okay. It's okay. 
I still don't want to be wrong. I still don't want to get your mom name wrong. I appreciate it. Messed up. You know what I mean? Shout out Miss Lisa. You were just saying, this is why I don't teach Joey things a minute ago. And then and then you can't even get his mom's name right. Yeah. I got it right now. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm still right. I got your back, Joe. (laughs) Do you? Because I'm still right. (laughs) I I said nothing wrong. I just made my mistake. (laughs) And I'm coming on back. Lisa, Lisa, this Linda, this Linda inaccuracy will not stand, man. Hey, shout out to Linda. Not I, Lisa. I do know a Linda in my life, and she's pretty dang on awesome. Shout out to well, her right on, man. And shout out to Lisa, Mama Spathis. That's what I'm used to calling her. And it works. It's true. Goose Island Beer Company. <laughs> beer, drink it. It's delicious. It's awesome. It's why I called her Linda because <laughs> of the Goose. <laughs> It's been Chicago's beer since the Jordan year, 1988. Beer Hug Family, 312 Weedell, Full Pocket Pilsner, and of course, they got that October Fest, which is Joey's favorite daylight savings time beer. Mm. It is awesome. Get yourself some and enjoy it. Grab that ultra fresh exclusive beer at the Goose Island Original Brew House on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or from the Tap Room on Fulton Street in West Town. It's the Goose Island Beer Company. Chicago's beer, the true taste of Chicago. The true taste of Chicago. I bet a, I bet a, Octo- a Goose Oktoberfest would go great with your uh, you know, slice of pumpkin pie at the end of your Thanksgiving meal. Uh, sweet potato. But sweet yes, potato? Yeah, absolutely right. I can rock sweet but potato. But at the same time, I won't be eating any of that because, you know, not eating sugar right now. But I'm still going to enjoy my thing. Oh, I'm Big Dave, and I don't eat sugar <laughs> yeah. or I'm dairy a, I'm a or any <laughs> real meat. <laughs> uh, I'm Samantha. Uh, <laughs> see, I get names wrong all the time. Charles, <laughs> let's do some super chats. <laughs> all right, we'll do some super chats, and then Yo. we will talk. <laughs> That wasn't even for no reason. Yeah. I just felt like I know, funny. I I like the it. No, the bulls suck. Out, yeah, I said it. All right. Come on, Joe. Ooh, Hold on. Let me mark this. <laughs> I got to mark this down now for the hat throw counter. That, that um, is literally three over there, Joe. There's three over there right now? Yes. <laughs> All right, McBaconator says, can we just talk about Kobe tonight? Maybe 45 minutes on Portillo or something? Hey, well. Joey don't want that. Uh, request Joey don't want to request fulfilled that. on the Kobe white love tonight, McBaconator. Yes, Appreciate the chat. Uh, always happy to talk about Portillo's no. whenever. Joey's I love not. that there's commercials everywhere for Portillo's now. Have you noticed that? I have They not. were on during Sunday football yesterday. You know who doesn't oh, like real? that? I haven't mm-hmm. noticed. Wiener Circle does not like that. No? Yeah, they oh. don't. They're rivals. Yeah. yeah, sure. They don't like no, no, no. Weird Circle loves trashing Portillo's on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, shout out to him. I'm entertained by it. AK oh. says, Matt, let the hate flow through you. 67 games to go. There's one for That's you. That's it. 67 um, too many. Melvin. Just kidding. I love being a Bulls fan. Facts. <laughs> Melvin Wyndham. Melvin. Oh, no. Zach Levine. Oh, now Zach Levine wants to smile when we lose, but walks off mad when we win. Mm. Was it those conspiracies, man? I mean, yeah. Was that like you know cheesing at the end of tonight? I didn't notice. I didn't notice. Melvin, I know. Who was the guy we were watching that you guys thought the that should have gone by Mel? Melvin. Oh, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. There's like the law firm, and one of the guys is like, "Hi, I'm Mel Brooks." When it's clearly not Mel Brooks. Shout out Johnny Cochran, rest in peace. Um, Johnny Cochran, what a stud, man. The Duke, aka John Wayne. Yeah. I'm feeling All bad for, for CHGO. Honestly, you guys are awesome to listen to and provide exceptional and entertaining coverage. Appreciate it. I hate that all of you guys have to cover. I, I hate that all you guys have to cover is disgustingly bad teams. Mm. Imagine the fun we could have with Oh, winners. it's going to happen. Could it's you coming. imagine listen, how much fun we'd have watching good basketball? It is going or good to football. happen. All right? It's going to happen. I tell you what. I, I I'm do, all right with this. I do feel great joy for the Blackhawks crew right now. Yes. Like I mean, the Blackhawks are also struggling. I think, like, the last time I checked, they yeah. were 5 oh, and struggling. 10. Yeah, Win-loss record, like, they're clearly still a young team that needs to get some more pieces. Yeah. But even just sitting down and watching Connor Bedard right now is worth it. Like, that worth every incredible. Second. Worth every second. Of and it. exciting. So, like, yeah. But I, I appreciate that, Duke, and I largely agree with you. Times are tough. Go watch yeah. the DNVR Nuggets championship episode, and that will, should give you a 
maybe a decent glimpse into be okay. what, what, what all this can be like. Um, Ricky Time says, Jeff. I had more fun watching the Bears fall apart at the last minute. Hashtag garbage. Oof. Mm, My condolences. I mean, I, it's wild how I knew they you were liked lose that, that better than that. I mean, this was expected trash. Yeah. yeah. As soon as I saw them kick that field, I was like, why are they kicking the field? I was like, they're going to lose. You're play- when you're playing not to lose, you're going to lose. That's how it goes. Yep. Bear down. But at least, like, you know, the, the Bears snatching defeat from the jaws of victory yesterday. Again, and I know we touched on this pregame. Does give some of us hope in some sense of, okay, we're still looking at potentially two top five picks, including the number one overall. Fair point. At least, they played, at least they and played well. And Justin looked great. Yeah, they played well. Ricky. Um, the Duke. I mean, I don't know if one of you guys wants to do this one. The uh, Goat the, of Empire. You want to do it? Uh, sure. Well, let me see. Uh, the Goat of Empire ads in the spirit of the holiday season. Sung in Deck the Halls. Deck your halls with brand new carpet. Just dial 1-800. Get free gift with your carpet. No, no. I think it's just dial 1-800. Get oh, a free gift you with yep, your carpet. 588-823. Ho, ho. I don't know. That, I, that I appreciate the Duke throwing some... Uh, <coughs> Revised, uh, you know, holiday song lyrics in there, but again, like, why, why mess with a good thing? Yeah, the Empire Jingle, it's perfect. It may as well be on Christmas albums. <laughs> it's that freaking good. That's a fact. It's that good, y'all. Love Enjoy you, Duke. Five eight eight two three hundred today. AK, AK says we know Zach wants out, but disappointed because his intentional lack of play is to the detriment of the team. This will continue as per script of Clutch Sports. Mm-hmm. What Zach is doing, or and I'm not com- and I'm not saying he's doing it on purpose because I still don't know yet. But what he's doing and how he's playing is why people hate James Harden. It's exactly why this kind of stuff. It's exactly uh, why, and I don't know. I, I I have been resisting making that comp. And so it, you've I, been I mean, like it's. It, ben. <laughs> It's not like it's not like this is you know uh, a pattern of behavior yeah. for Zach. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not making the. I'm saying what I'm continuing to. And I, again, like I said, that's why I preface it by saying I don't know if this is what he's doing. Right. I'm not sure. I'm just watching how it's happening and seeing what it is. Is why people hate James Harden. It's one of the reasons why. I don't think Zach is. I still don't believe Zach is doing that. I think he's just really off to a really terrible slump. And it's just really bad basketball out there. But then when I'm watching him do things I've never seen him do, that's when I'm like, what the hell, man? That's what gets confusing. That's when it gets confusing. When you're doing shit I ain't never seen. What the hell, indeed. What the hell? Come on, Joe. Uh, The Duke, Duke. uh, that ad was from 1988. 1998. Last Bulls championship. I'm not crying. You're crying. Oh, we're, oh, we're crying. <laughs> Believe me, we're crying, Duke. Yeah, he's crying. Did you, did you hear the part where I went back and rewatched the last dance again? Again. Recently? Cause uh, I, again. Because I am in that dark of a place. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, crying because I was not alive for that. So You missed it, Joe. No Bulls championships what for me. What an amazing time you missed. Just, just a twin. Man, Joe. Just a twin Zero twin Bulls eye. championships for me. Sorry about that, Joe. And Six for me. Dings <laughs> even more. Man. Big Dave made great points. This is from Taryn Seven. Big Dave made great points about Zach and Demar. Respect. Still gonna defend Zach. LOL. You are absolutely Appreciate allowed that. to. And you're right. And it ain't that I hate Zach. I still love Zach. I still think he's a good basketball player. I just want him to play better, though. Play, play better. Like just gotta look, play better, man. Look more like the twenty five points per game scorer that you supposedly are. This is who you are. Like you, you're that good. You're that kind of basketball player. So it, this is just frustration. Also, like, from me, uh, it is, it's, not, it's not like Zach can pick where he wants to go. Yeah, dude doesn't have a no trade clause. Right, Bulls are gonna take the best offer they get for him. Correct. But if some of those preferred destinations for Zach involve the Lakers or some other team that's looking good where yeah. he wants to go, yeah, it is in his best interest to ball out right now. Yeah. Yeah, makes so it the, easy. the number of teams that want you and are competing and bidding for your services in the trade talks for the next month and change, they will give up more to prove that they want you. Benefits Zach, benefits the Bulls. Matt, who's the player that's balling out for the Bulls right now that would continually say will have the biggest trade value going forward? Tiny Archibald, uh, <laughs> Alex Caruso. 
Shout out MVP, Tiny Archibald. <laughs> Joe, you know Tiny Archibald? Uh, no. Uh, he was it's like, okay. I feel like, yeah, he was what, Matt? I was going to say he was like the regular Archibald, but smaller. <laughs> I feel like he's like a random Bulls generator guy. But I don't know. I could be wrong. He was the MVP of the league, Joe. Yeah, he was a random Bulls generator. That's not ra- nothing random about that. Yeah, well, come on. <laughs> we don't discriminate over on RGB. Um, <laughs> not. But yes, I think uh, we to your do point, Caruso. still have RG. to quickly talk about uh, RBG. RBG. Mm-hmm. About the uh, di- about the Black oh, Friday sale. Absolutely. Quick shout out and then we'll get out of here. We are about to launch a Black Friday sale of our own. Um, it's savings season, and the same is true at the CHO Merch Locker, Facts. where you can get select shirts up to 90% off. Shut up! I said 90. You did! As in the year before the Bulls won their first championship You meant it, too! That's right. Screw you, Detroit! Uh, you can get team gear at least 20% off, whatever it is. Damn. CHGO gear, like our CHGO hoodies, our CHGO shirts, 33% off. Our hats, including the new ones. Bam! Hoodies. Ten dollars off, Pow-pow! and if you spend seventy five dollars or more and receive uh, f- uh, and fifteen dollars, spend seventy five dollars and then receive a fifteen dollar gift card for your next shopping adventure at Pow! the CHO Merch Merch Locker, y'all. Savings on savings on savings on savings. Pow pow. CHO Merch Locker. Also, like while you are doing your Black Friday shopping, right? Why not also sign up and become a diehard? Why not? It's the, I mean, the time is now. Seriously. You get John all Cena. of those wonderful benefits. Obviously, the premium written content, some of which is for diehards only, like the peck and order that I wrote on Friday. Flex. Like the mailbag, y'all's questions asked to and answered by our guy, Will to Go Gottlieb, that's up go? right now. Put it up this morning. Uh, the Discord, diehards only. When you sign up to be a, a diehard, you get a shirt or hat of your choice. Just for signing up, mm. and then you get 20% every time you shop. I mean, it's perks on perks on perks, plus, of course, discounts to all of our fun events. The tailgates, the takeovers. Do it. Get your holiday shopping done. Do I'm, it. I'm, 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 <laughs> a bunch of my friends and family are about to get a bunch of CHO here oh, for Christmas. Oh, a CHO Christmas happening. You can't spell Christmas without the C and the H. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. Yeah. You need it. I like Israel in the comments. I just got my CHGO Bulls sweater the other day. I love it. I hate this team. <laughs> oh. No, nah, pretty Ricky. Pretty Ricky. I ain't being nice. I ain't being nice at all, man. I just don't know. I like to say it on facts. I need facts before I can go in on Zach. That rhymed. I need facts first, pretty Ricky. I need facts. Pretty Ricky, what they call him. I need pretty facts, Ricky. bro. I can't just sit here and, and say, you know, what Zach is doing when I don't know. I really don't know. But don't know. It's trending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I can tell you that it's mm-hmm. trending because it's trash right now. Trendy, Who is this player? Trash. Who is this player, Joey? It's supposed to be all NBA, man. That is Tiny Archibald. Hey. Former <laughs> <MVP>. Lord, <laughs> he called it back. Oh Lord. Oh, what's his first name, Joe? Tiny. Oh. <laughs> Small. <clears throat> Small is his first name. They call him Tiny for short. Oh, uh, we were looking for John Wayne. <laughs> uh, yes, you can was his name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will get out of here. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us late on a Monday night. I mean, you were up watching, uh, you know, Chiefs Eagles anyway, right? So thank you for tuning in to us as well. Good ending to that game, by the way. Yeah? Ball off. Patrick Mahomes couldn't have made Not a better throw. Not for my fantasy throw. team. Couldn't have made a better throw. Got, I mean, the Chiefs receivers <laughs> selling. Yeah. Not for my fantasy team, we won the good ending. Because if I, he made that touchdown, I won. That's tough. I would have won. I mean, I we're, lost talking, by three. we're talking about a walk-in touchdown here. Yeah. I mean, it was a, obviously, I don't know if I'm making that catch, but I'm also not a professional Dude, football player. I lost player. by three. Oh, I'll have to go back and no, uh, go catch watch the, it. the fourth quarter highlights. Because I, I saw it. I, I was see. too busy sitting here talking about this trash-ass Bulls team. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for not catching that. By the I way, lost that, by was, three. that was two hats and one. I lost by three. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Sorry for your loss. Uh, Colin, thank you. Alex, Come thank on! you. Ostis Jr., good to see you. Justin, Michael, what's up, man? Uh, much love, Bulls fans. We will try again Wednesday when the Bulls hit the road. They take on the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are young and oh good. My God. And I am scared. And you should be. <laughs> this is terrifying. We are off tomorrow, but make sure y'all get Will's thoughts on tonight's game, allcsgo.com. Follow him, Will underscore Godly, for all of his Bulls updates. 
Can I say one more thing? Please do. Patrick Williams, I've been waiting for you for years to play like that. To do a goddamn layup when you're under control. Years! I've been waiting for this. And you did it now tonight? This is when you do it when you're coming off the bench. You're the 10th man off the bench? God damn. All right. I'm done. The man's patient. It's a patient. Years! It's a patient man. God damn it. Years. Follow Big Dave, the patient man. Yeah. That big <laughs> bow. B-A-W-O. No more hats. I am bow. out of hats. <laughs> I threw all three at once. Because, you know, hat throws are hat throws. Uh, hey, Joey's going to give you a one for the last second hat. Oh, he needs one, Joe. He just needs one. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pat. Yeah, actually, yeah. you're right. I need another one. <laughs> Follow Dave. Bow, BWL Sports. I am Bulls underscore Peck. We are CHO underscore Bulls. Our pal and producer, Joyce Bathis, is at Joyce Bathis. He is the son of Lisa and George. Oh, George would be proud. We are off tomorrow. Uh, whew, I and Lisa it. is suspecting. I, I need a Tuesday with no Bulls basketball. That's going to be great. We will talk to you pregame Wednesday night, 630, before Bulls Thunder. A little precursor to Thanksgiving. Until then, thanks for tuning in. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe. See you, Rebby Good. Linda, I love you. I do. Peace.